Hey friends, I'm Buddy Hutton. If you've seen my work on GameSpot, you know that I'm a big Justin Roiland fan, so obviously I was excited to get to play Trover Saves the Universe. This was my first video game breakdown ever, and not being able to rewind really changed the way that I work. I think this was the funniest video game that I've ever played, and maybe the funniest one ever made, but we can do battle about that in the comments later. Now let's break down Trover Saves the Universe for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation VR. In Trover Saves the Universe, you aren't actually Trover, but you do take part in the whole saving the universe thing. You play as an unnamed Chiropian who's working with Trover only because he's on assignment from his boss at the important Cosmic Jobs office. Beings from planet Chiropia are fused to or possibly born sitting in an armchair, holding what looks remarkably like a PlayStation DualShock 4. You connect this controller to Trover, who is an eyehole monster, by simply taking one of the power babies out of his eyeholes and plugging it in, giving you dominion over Trover's body. But his mind and voice belong to Justin Roiland, a fact you will be reminded of often. Just me, the voice actor, talking. It's just one voice, but we put a special effect to make it sound like three characters talking at once. You know what? I'm done. I'm, I'm done. Trover Saves the Universe is a PlayStation VR game. You can look down in VR to see your useless little Chiropian legs kicking around, or lean to check behind things to find collectibles, which are those power babies I mentioned before. As you play through the game, both you and Trover get ability and movement upgrades, allowing you to access more areas to solve more puzzles and find more frickin' power babies. So, you know, power babies are, like, super important, man, because the red ones give me health, but, like, the green ones, I'm trying to save those because they're an endangered species, and if you collect them, that'll really put some skin in the game for me, you know? It's like tipping an Uber driver. Plus, they get me really high. Okay, so this is an Easter egg video, and I'll get to them in a second, but I want to mention something first. This game is different than anything I've played before. It feels like Justin is just making it all up on the spot, and I found out that's because he kinda is. Squanch Games, formerly Squanch Tendo, was created when Justin paired up with Tanya Watson, former EP at Epic Games. The company they built makes games that are funny by making the funny first and then building the game around it improv style which is a pretty new concept in games. The VO in the game is made up by Justin from a bulleted list of story beats. He would just go into the booth and make things funny. They even made new dev tools to help the creative process. And I'm used to, well, A comes before B, B comes before yeah. C, you know, and this is kind of the way it goes. Um, and with accounting and with all the stuff that we're currently making, you know, we've completely reset that paradigm and said, well, wait, like, let's rethink this. And because they didn't want repeated dialogue, they put 20 hours of audio into an eight hour game. You're gonna find things that I didn't find in this video because there's different ways to trigger different dialogue. For example, there are three different outcomes to this altercation with an old Chiropian. You can leave him alone, beat him to silence, or kill him. Depending on what you do, you'll have a different experience at the end of the game. A lot of the Easter eggs come from waiting around in a scene after you receive instructions just to hear what the VO develops into as Justin tries to make himself laugh. And you'll laugh too, unless you're a soulless eyehole monster. I got a bad memory. I don't remember a lot of stuff. <laughs> Here. It's the first game I've ever played that's gotten more entertaining as you just sit there doing nothing. If you have as much trouble sitting still as I do, there's a trash can basketball hoop that you can use your PSVR headset to aim with. You're gonna get a lot of use out of it while you're hanging out in your telepod listening to Bathtub Guy talk about his relationship with his mother. But my mother always says, Bathtub Guy, shut up about real estate. <laughs> with the shared artist and writing staff and Justin Roiland himself, there are gonna be moments in this game that you feel the characters and scenes are direct references to those familiar shows, but I've been assured that none of that is on purpose. It's just Justin being purely creative and what tends to come out is all the sphincters, farts, and testicle trees that we all love so much. Is that, is that Oh, sorry about that. I guess I forgot what direction my toilet was in. Oh, get the f out of here. Okay, so let's start with what is always at the forefront of my mind, Rick and Morty. Your dogs who are kidnapped by Glorcon at the beginning of the game look a lot like Snowball from Rick and Morty Season 1. That's because Snowball is based on one of Justin's actual dogs who are named Jerry and Pup Pup. Just look at them in glorious VR. You feel like you can almost shove them right into your eye holes. The first world that you and Trover head to is called Schleamy World. The word Schleem is used a few times in Rick and Morty. It's on the I Dick Schleamy's bumper sticker on Rick's ship and is one of the key ingredients in Plumbus manufacture. The testicle trees that's their actual name, I checked. On Schleamy are reminiscent of the mega trees in that they have what looks to be a scrotum. With VR, you can really get in and inspect the scrotum too. There are boxes of science shit that remind me of the box of time travel stuff on the shelves in Rick's garage. Flesh World looks like Anatomy Park that was Cronenberged. 
Trover's boss at the important Cosmic Jobs office has a mounted worm head that looks like a green gibble snake from the Whirly Durly conspiracy, with green protrusions coming out of its mouth. Actually, Trover's boss is like a mashup of Rick and Zeep Xanthorpe wearing a more elaborate Council of Rick neck triangle with green protrusions on his head. And they added a weird hole in his forehead, possibly for a power baby. Maybe I went too deep here. Justin Roiland plays a lot of video games, so there are a ton of references in the VO to other games. As you move blocks in the level Shroomia using the PSVR head control, some enemies start heckling you with Minecraft jokes. What are they doing? What is this? What is this? Minecraft? Yeah. What are they, stupid? What, are they gonna build a fort? They'll never build a fort as cool as our f***ing fort! There are really deep cuts, like Glorcon calling the power-generating equipment in his base a pylon, like from StarCraft. The Konami code, up, up, down, down, B-A, start, is mentioned, as well as references that you can find to Donkey Kong, Banjo-Kazooie, and even Dragon's Lair. Yeah, uh, hello! Dragon Slayer from 1985 called... It wants its f***ing lame, quick-time event bull****. Whatever, who cares? On Flesh World, there are bugs that look like the piranha plants from Mario Brothers while they are in the ground. You can pop them up into the air, catch them, and shoot them at targets. In VR, it feels like you have frickin' telepathy. On Schleamy World, there are green sewer pipes that look like warp tubes from Mario Brothers. There are more movie references than I could keep track of and just so many mentions of general pop culture. One of my favorites included a prisoner who begins a monologue that sounds like a quote from Shawshank Redemption, but quickly turns into him fetishizing poop. Go make some of your butt pudding and flush that baby brown down to Andy Town. Cause daddy gotta eat. Mm -hmm. it, it's Andy Town is me, I'm Andy. Okay, sure thing, will do. This guy on Chiropia is the inventor of black holes and looks a lot like Stephen Hawking. Glorcon's base has a massive shield around it, like an Empire Strikes Back, not to mention that Trover is using a lightsaber. Lastly, a few things about the game cover. On the back cover, there are award badges for made-up things like the Flip Flop Award and Best Schlooper. And now for the biggest Easter egg of all. This is a hand-drawn concept of Trover done by Justin Roiland, which will be on the inside cover of the game. On the other fold, you can see behind the telepod what looks like someone crawling into a cave. This is what Justin Roiland drew when asked what Glorcon would look like when sticking his head into the telepod. Glorcon is a large, hairless, naked purple chicken. What Justin drew looks like a human baby with hair and clothes on. What was he trying to draw? This made people at Squanch so delighted or confused that without Justin's knowledge, they hid this image throughout the game. Some of them even got tattoos of it. I Squanch it. Uh, and I'm ready to get back on that horse. Oh man, I had to stop eating those. They kept making me pee blood. As I mentioned before, you're gonna find your own Easter eggs and hear dialogue that I didn't because there's a huge pool of it that I couldn't have possibly triggered all of. So let us know what you find in the comments. I didn't find all the power babies, maybe because I was too true to my Chiropian role and staying firmly planted in my armchair and not using my PSVR to look behind every last testicle tree. Lastly, Squanch Games is planning to expand the game with a steady stream of free DLC developed after they release it. So there will be more poop jokes to come. Starting on May 31st, you can get a bundle with the PlayStation VR headset and camera along with game vouchers for Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted VR and Trover Saves the Universe, all for $299.99 MSRP. You should go get it. Thank you so much for watching. I love you. Go f play your stupid dumb game and f beat us. Stupid f idiots.